Hello and welcome to this video on the Ultra Random Redux and it's the return of a Yororak classic from Steady State Fit. Let's check out what's to come. This demo video is sponsored by Steady State Fit. Now back in 2014, Steady State Fit released the Ultra Random Analog, and I think it's absolutely fair to say it's one of Yororak's classics. The new Ultra Random Redux takes that design and builds upon it with new circuits and features, creating an even more powerful random CV or audio source, or CV and audio processor. Let's start by jumping into the features. Going top down here, we have a random pulse generator. This runs on internal timing and has a density control to create how dense right through audio down into sub audio gate and pulse streams. And it has a divider that you can divide down the clock, which divides down its frequency. But really interestingly, it becomes more stable with higher division numbers and it's way more chaotic and random at lower divisor numbers. This can run freely, or it can work with external triggers at the A and B inputs that we'll come to. It has its pulse output, which does normalize to the slew input. If you want to slew that and create trapezoid style envelopes, and you have CV over the density control. Moving to the slew, as I say, the pulse normalizes to it, but you can input any signal here into the slew, CV or audio. You have a slew control, a slew output, and a slew CV. We have a random flux, which at its lowest setting works similarly to a sample and hold sampling a noise signal. This is its own slew control with its own flux CV, a slew amount CV, has one output, and it has its own trigger which normalizes to the triggers above the A and B sample and hold triggers here. And most interestingly to me, it has a flux probability. And if you input an offset voltage here, say two volts, the voltages it's creating and slewing around are more likely to be around that voltage. It's a really interesting effect that we'll see with an example later in the video. We then have two sample and holds, an A and B section, with an A trigger that normalizes down and a B trigger as well. We have A and B sample inputs that are normalized to their own analog noise sources and they have their own outputs. Both the internal noise or an external signal that you plug into sample here go through their own series of processes. When it's set to bipolar, these arrows being up and down, this is unaffected. As we switch down to the two arrows up, you can full wave rectify this signal. And at the bottom, the arrow and the question mark, you can half wave rectify this signal. So in full wave rectification mode, you can flip up negative voltages to get only positive ones, unipolar positive voltages, or you can just have unipolar voltages that simply cut off and ignore all the negative voltages. And they're really interesting different behaviors that we'll explore in the video. As well as their own A and B outputs on these sample and hold channels, we have a toggle output. And this is a switch that switches every time channel B is triggered. So you can kind of wave splice or CV swap between what's on these two different channels for audio and CV. And it's an interesting additional output here again that we'll explore in the video. So hopefully you can tell straight away this is a really comprehensive voltage generator or processor. And with that in mind, there's lots of patches. Those are all on screen if you'd like to skip around. 
and it's all linked down in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we're looking at the sample and hold, and in its most basic form of use here, a trigger input and an output. I have a sound, triggered by this yellow trace here, my clock, and I'm pinging the steady state gate. The same clock is patched to the trigger of the sample and hold, and I'm using this output for pitch. You can be way more creative than just random pitch shifts, as we will be in the video. It's a good example of these functions here. As I've no input to the sampling, the trigger samples an internal analog noise source, and external inputs, or the internal noise inputs, go through three different behaviours. With the switch here, there's independent switches for the A and B sample and hold circuits. We can be bipolar, which is what's happening here. The blue trace is zero volts, and we can see in here both negative and positive voltages going higher and lower in pitch. That's my bass tuning. And we're going up and down from that point. The second mode fully rectifies the input to the sample and hold. And again, that's a noise source here. So this is all unipolar voltages that are all positive. Indicated by the double up arrows, and then the up question mark is half wave rectified. So instead of flipping up negative voltages like full wave rectification does, this simply chops them off. So it introduces a probability that you'll actually get any change because the negative voltages have been clipped off and you get lots of notes that land at zero volts. And this can be incredibly musical for having things change, not every single time, and for them to land around a static value. So here I just quickly wanted to inject a really musical use of sample and hold, which is modulating envelope decay times. It's something I do a lot of, and it creates a lot of engagement and kind of excitement in a basic sequence. This is oscillators into a filter here, with this blue trace envelope modulating my filter cutoff. The green trace is the sample output, and I'm triggering the internal noise. This is my clock and sequence that I'm triggering with. And I'm using this as an attenuator for this random voltage, and even just adding a little bit of it to this envelope. You can see in here, way more excitement, I feel way more kind of pumped up and engaged with this patch. Going, much more signal going in. We're getting wide pushes and pulls of that decay time with this positive and negative bipolar signal. Now if we go all the way to the bottom here on the mode switch, this hangs around zero volts would do nothing to the envelope. This is the kind of base state of the decay time. And then adding this in. We just get these kind of more random, less kind of active, higher voltages that then inject the kind of nice little log note accent into this sequence. So here we're sampling external voltages to create really nice melodic patterns. This is a unipolar sine wave, not to five volts. Coming into sample here, this has been triggered, and the output is the blue trace that I'm then quantizing externally, so this is quantized to a musical scale. And you can hear that depending on the rate we clock this, and the rate of this sine wave, we get really lovely, almost like harp picking, finger picking on a guitar style melodies here. Now if I start to slow down the modulation, but keep the triggering at the same rate, you can see we're very much following this pattern, but in a stepped sampled manner. If I speed up the triggering, we get more steps. If I slow it down, Get less steps in these sign like kind of stepped pyramid waves. Now, coming back up with my rate of triggering, and I'll speed up the sine wave again. You can hear these are very similar, and this is kind of a phasing between the clock rate and the modulation that we're sampling rate. It 
sort of feels like there's repetition in there, but just with the odd note changing. And this is the really nice thing about sampling sources where things aren't in sync. So here's a really fun patch where I'm using the two sample and holds as kind of stereo shuffling riffs. And it's the modulation that's making this exciting, it's all just sat on one note. Now there's some drums, they're separate to what's going on here. And here's my main riff, it's a saw wave into the stereo dipole, dipoles which are dual filters so this is four in total, a hard left and right as stereo through a little bit of crunchy delay, and the two sampling holds here, green and blue cables and traces, are modulating both sides of the filter. I'm then also using the slew here on these pink cables to add slew to a keyboard signal. If I turn this down and just play a keyboard off screen, That's just normal Volt Proctive coming through, but adding some slew. Hopefully you can hear that bend, that kind of swaying between the pitches. Now let's zoom out and have a bit of a wider jam, as this has been really musical and fun to play with. So as well as using sample and holds to sample CV voltages or noise to create random voltages, you can sample and destruct audio. The green trace here is my input, green cables, blue trace is the output, and the yellow trace is a much higher pitched square wave oscillator that's triggering the sample and hold. So audio comes in, it's sampled at this higher rate, and it outputs a stepped wave dependent on this yellow clock signal, this oscillator. Now both the clock and the actual audio source here are both tracking the same volt proctiv pitch, so the tone is changing relative to the pitch sequence. But if I take out the volt proctiv from this oscillator, Now you don't just have to process CV and sample modulation with sample and holds, you can use them for audio. And here I'm using it for a very high audio rate VCO as a trigger to give me destructive digitized stepped aliasing or down sampled effects, adding some destruction to my audio. Now turning up the trigger here so it's even higher, this is supersonic and we can't hear any effect. But as I bring down the pitch of my oscillator going into the trigger here, we can go complete destruction with this. The input to the sample and hold is my whole patch, the bass and the drums. The trigger, as I say, is this audio rate, high pitched VCO. Using the second channel, or rather channel A, it's channel B doing the destructive audio processing to give me some stepped modulation, which I'm going to input to the oscillator's tuning here. So the rate of audio rate modulation is changing, giving a stepped destructive audio effect. So here I'm taking advantage of the inbuilt noise generator normalized to the sample and hold and using it as an actual noise source. 
So cutting everything back, we're listening to the actual sample output and visualizing it here on data. And I'm triggering this with an oscillator. As I bring up the frequency of the oscillator, we start to get into audio noise tones. With a really high clock into the trigger input, we get white style noise. If I just sweep this frequency back down again, we could also patch this into the slew as a kind of crude low pass filter. We lose some top end right away. And we very quickly filter this away by adding slew to it. Noise sources are great for percussion. So here it is through a VCA with an envelope on it. And then add some sequencing to the oscillator that's triggering it. So here we're looking at the toggle circuit. This takes the B trigger and toggles between the output of sample and hole A and the output of sample and hole B. The toggle LED is lit while it's the output of B and it's off while it's A. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Now B is triggering a quarter notes. That's the rate of this kick drum. Now by triggering these at different rates, B will trigger its own sample and hold circuit and the toggle in. A will trigger itself and only itself because it's not normally down here. A is triggered at 16th notes, B at quarter notes, so it's four times faster, meaning when it's on the A section for its output, we get four notes or four random values coming through. And when it moves to B, this holds for four of these 16th notes. B is always zero volts here because I have this dummy cable, just a cable that's not connected to anything else, cutting out its internal noise modulation. And if I say move the B triggering to half notes rather than quarter notes, we get eight steps that then move down to B and hold zero volts and back again. A, B, A, B. If I remove this cable, every time it goes to B, it will sample its internal noise and move this back to quarter notes. And it's a really interesting way to switch between two different sample and hold circuits that could be sampling different things, internal noise, external voltages. This could be audio splicing that you're doing between different channels. And as I'm doing here, you could trigger them at different rates as well. So here we're looking at the flux section. And for those of you that remember the ultra random analog that preceded this, it didn't have its own trigger, but it now has its own trigger to control its rate. I'm however triggering the flux section from the A trig, as that normals from sample and hold A trigger to B trigger to flux, they just normalize down. We have one control, the delta for the random flux, which is a slew, and with that all the way down, it serves as another sample and hold style stepped random output. Delta is a slew control, much like the separate slew section. But the really interesting thing here with the flux is that we have a flux probability input. And if we input a voltage here, just again a static offset, which will be my yellow trace when I add it, it's a probability that the voltages are going to drift to that level, to that voltage. So if I plug in the probability here, let's keep the slew up high, and just add a positive voltage. Notice that the output is kind of hanging around. That yellow trace, this offset voltage into flux probability. Likewise, if I add a negative voltage, so under the pink line, under zero volts, Notice the output is kind of wandering around this voltage that I've added. And that's a really fantastic way to be able to dial in a kind of area of voltage with a static offset, and then have a random voltage just kind of meander and move around it. So let's take a look at the slew section with an external voltage. This is square wave coming out as it's a square wave coming in, and it's just modulating a filter. 
know as I add linear slew to it, you can see it changes the edges in this signal, and a slew alters the rate of change. Fast changes become slewed, they glide or lag. Much like Portavento on a keyboard, they don't hard change between key presses, they glide, slide, slew, or lag between them. So we can add enough slew to get a triangle LFO instead of a square. And you can slew so much that you really just diminish the signal. A really nice signal to work with with the slew is the internal sample and hold. So let's patch the internal sample and hold into it. And just smoothing out these stepped edges. Lots of slew feels like a smooth fluctuating random. And Les just has this nice glidey, slidey edge to it. So here we've gone kind of super random. Let's pull this out and build it back up. So here's the slew output with nothing patched. By default, the random pulse output is the input to the slew. You can see the arrow normalizing across. And then we can add slew to it. Now plug in the random pulse output so you can see what the slew is doing here. And as this is all timed from the random pulse, let's use the random pulse to trigger the other sections. We'll trigger A here, and we'll take a sample and hold signal from A. That's this yellow trace here. And we can CV the slew. So we're slewing the random pulse, but the random pulse is triggering the sample and hold, giving us each time a pulse hits a random voltage for a random slew amount. So let's add this stepped random signal. As we're triggering everything else in the patch, we could also use the B output for pitch. So this whole patch is controlled by the random pulse. We're slewing the pulse. We're generating random voltages to CV control the amount of slew and also getting a random pitch as well. So as you've watched the slew happening, you might be thinking, this kind of looks like a filter. If I filter a rich wave, I round off the edges, and it's very much a similar circuit and behavior that's going on. So we can use the slew here as a crude low pass filter. This is my saw wave coming in, currently modulating this. Let's remove the modulation. Green trace is the input, blue is the output to the slew. And it's not an audio rate filter, in terms of audio frequency filtering. So there is some top end roll off already. There's the input saw. And the output saw, which is already duller. Adding more slew. Diminishes this signal. You don't have a huge range of control, but that's because the slew is very much there for sub audio slewing. It's not a low pass filter frequency control. Let's tune up a little bit and then add an envelope to the CV of the slew amount. And I'll offset down. And there we have a crude low pass filter. So let's start with the random pulse section and using it as an audio source. Divisor on one, bringing up the density. You can hear these Geiger counter like clicks. A bit higher, and it's kind of like digital garbage. And then we move up to white like noise. Clearly, digital and more metallic than that, but similar in tone to white noise. Now interestingly, as we move the divisor, the random pulses don't just divide in frequency, but they actually get more stable and more VCO-like. <laughs> to the point that that just sounds like a square wave VCO. And density serves more like a pitch control. So with all that in mind, 
let's use it for some percussion and make some beats. Now here we'll look at the random pulse for rhythms, clocks, triggers, gates in a musical way and not just as an audio source. Here I'm syncing the triggering to an external clock. This is the green tray screen cable here. And we're randomly firing rim shots and some low pass gate sounds. And it's all in time. Now muting all the other sounds. We'll just listen to this rim shot which is triggered by this blue trace, blue cable, the random pulse output. Now removing this clock, we'll go to the G-Sync first. And when we're on divisor 1, this creates the most random kind of fidgeting, random timing, random pulse length or gate length output. Now if I just pause the scope for a second, the way this will work when we then try and sync to a steady clock, i.e. this green one, the areas that are open, kind of in the gates, within the gates themselves, is what will let these triggers through. This might sound like AND logic, where two signals have to be high at the same time, and that's very much how this is functioning, but it's achieved here with a VCA. So the trigger becomes the input to the VCA, the VCA is only open when the internal random voltage, i.e. this one, is high. So we'll only let triggers through when its internal signal generation is high and then it outputs what that VCA behavior does. So we don't see shifting gate lengths when we shift to trigger externally. But this needs to be high internally to let these ones pass. Now just a note on the free running mode there. Density is how busy and dense these are. Again, still just triggering a rim shot here. And as we divide down, you get a much more stable clock. The divisor of one is the most frantic and random. And the bigger the divisor, the more regular and steady these clocks are. So all this behavior that you're seeing and hearing is what's going to let these triggers through or not. Musical random pulses achieved by taking the analog random, opening a VCA with it, and then only letting your triggers through when it's already high internally. So as these random pulses get more stable as we divide round further, I thought I'd try using them as a kind of wonky, almost stable clock. If we just take a moment to listen, this is quite stable, but there's just this slight jitter to it. I find it really quite musical. It's pleasing in a sort of human way, as it feels regular with imperfections as opposed to actually feeling random. Now if I move around these divisions, but just adjust the density to get a similar rate each time, you'll hear how much more random they are as we go back around these divisors. A little bit more random, but still quite stable. You can hear a lot of jitter and rhythmic change there. even more, even more, really quite random at this point, and really random, through to the kind of falling apart, truly chaotic randomness of those lower divisor numbers. So it's interesting as a clock source with those higher divisors, clocking the rest of the module, clocking the rest of a patch. Use it as a clock and see what you can get out of it. So I was playing around with the 
random pulse as a kind of Geiger counter tick. Then thought, this sounds a bit like vinyl crackle, let's combine it with some other noise. And kind of create this recipe for a Geiger counter vinyl crackle, lo-fi noisy, warped, broken, lo-fi vinyl thing. So here's the sound. This is the random pulse output into a bandpass filter. Yeah, those really lovely, especially if they make them resonant. Geiger counter pings. But when it's non-resonant, you just place these clicks a little bit like vinyl crackle. And then have noise by sending an oscillator into the sample and hold. That's coming out and being low pass filtered. So the combination of those creates this kind of background noise. Although it's not very background in this mix. And I then have an oscillator with an arpeggiator playing. I'm using the random flux as a kind of wonky random voltage to pull the FM around, giving this weird drunk vibrato, if you like. It's got noise, crackliness, vinyl crackle. For those that like their lo-fi noisy and weird, here you go. Now I've always enjoyed making quirky drum kits, so here I'm rinsing the ultra random redux for several noise sources to make a quirky drum kit. And then an external kick from the ultra kick. Just backing it up. But everything else is coming from the ultra random redux as a noise source, a multi output noise source through VCAs with envelopes. Now starting with the snare, that's the random pulse section there. And then the hi-hats, these are the two sample and hold sections, A and B. I'm then using the flux section, and because it has a bit of slew, we actually get this kind of sign-like tom tone. And then finally, not on the scope, I'm taking the toggle output with a longer decaying envelope, kind of serves like a crash symbol at the start of the beat. So bringing everything back in. This is five noise sources, random pulse for a snare, sample and hold, both of them for stereo hi-hats, tom-like sound out of flux, and the toggle output is a crash. So as a bit of a bonus thing, the actual sample and holes can be used for full wave and half wave rectification. We've seen that behaviour change when we're using the sample and holes to create modulation, but here we're going to look at it for external modulation and for audio. I'm triggering all the clocking here because they normal down with an audio rate VCO just to kind of get it up out of the way. If I bring that down in my patch, there's that down sampling that we've already heard. So it's just high enough triggering to be supersonic and, as I say, out of the way. If I bring this down to full wave rectification, listen and watch the blue trace, you get a kind of glitchy octave shift as you full wave rectify that audio waveform. And then half wave is interesting as you're cutting off all the negative portion of the wave. Now we can also do this with modulation. Let's just adjust the scope here. On the second channel, the red trace ramp wave is what's coming in. Let's use that to modulate this folding that we're listening to. And again, as this is triggering sampling high into audio rates, it just sounds like the LFO is passing through that B sample channel there. If I half wave rectify, it cuts off any negative signal. And if I full wave rectify in the middle, we actually get a triangle wave as the bottom part of that ramp flips up and forms a falling ramp to go with the rising ramp. Bipolar saw to unipolar triangle. So if you've got this far in the video, go drop a hard sync in the comments and let me know which one of these patches was your favourite. 
You can head over to patreon.com forward slash divkid to support the work that I do and gain access to lots of exclusives. You can hit like and subscribe to support me as well. That's all appreciated and it helps out the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.